Anybody could bring back my family? Nobody. And not just that, but they take away from people. They give anybody back. That was a good life because my parents was in good business and everything, a fruit business. We all was in it. I was seven children. I was about 18 or 19. I was the youngest in this family. So suddenly they came and take us away. So I got the Shatoraya Ui hair. I had the star hair, but it was cold. I put on a shawl. Then they sending for me from the office. The family was very upset. They told they gonna take me away now. And everybody was standing in the window, was waiting if they let me go. But finally they let me go home. And a couple of days later, they come and take us away. We didn't know where they take us with the train. They don't let you go to toilet. And it was 90 people in that. And they used the bucket. And I was sitting near the window. So when they have to empty the dish, so I have to do it. And the wind blow in my eyes. And after three days, they took me over. And they said, the package has to live in the train, you will get laid there. But that was a lie. We never get it. We have to separate with the older one of that side and the young that side. My mother has a black dress and red and white coconuts in it. And that's front of me how long I live. I see the dress. And not just that, I, she was looking back that we don't go with her. You know, we was in the other side and we don't know we have to say goodbye. We thought we will be together. But you know, my parents, they killed, and my brother never see. So, one of my sisters had three children, never see her. A beautiful baby, and they killed her. But the other sister was on, who wasn't married, he was with me. That's a big building. We didn't know what was it. We was asking everybody, hey, what did so much smoke come out from the chimney and so much smell? And nobody tell. Finally, a, a three days later, somebody says that they're burning their your mother. That kind of smoke doesn't come for nothing. It was terrible. It was not a day that we didn't cry. They take us to a big room and there was soldiers and we were standing there naked and the soldiers was cutting our hair. I don't recognize my sister. No hair, no clothes.
they just take me and give a number. And later they give a dress and that's all. But four o'clock in the morning, they take us out and we are almost frozen there. So uh, one day I said, there is no God. That's the one, one time I was saying, because it was so cold that I really mean that we're gonna freeze. Then you see the cars taking the dead people and half dead and they taking to care. We was people just like them. How they could that to people? It's very shameful what they did to us. And then one day, they asking me, not just me, a few women, to do some work. The clothes was in a bag, and then we have to take out. And what happened? I opened a bag. There was my mother's. But you wasn't able to cry. But I was screaming. I didn't care. They will kill me. What's the difference? And there was with me a German woman who was taking care of. She was asking that what happened, what happened. And the girls told her that I find my daughter's address. And they said she was crying too. No water, no medication uh, for weeks. But I didn't know for nothing. And then what happened finally, I get better because they finished the war. And when we get liberated, I don't have where to go. I was staying a half a year there after liberation. We don't have no parents, no home, nothing to where to go. But about a half a year later, two brothers were home and one of them was very sick. And then I went home, he was died. And just a, a couple of weeks before. That was Friday, and Sunday there was a wedding. He was there. He was dancing just with me. He says, can I kiss you? I said, no. But in the evening, they knocking the door. Who come? Peter come. And a week later, we was engaged. It's funny, you know? but the best man ever. And I was married here 45 years.